Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. All right, guys, today I'm here with Thomas Carlson. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I'm so, so glad we got to meet up today. Um, I saw your work like a year ago, and I was always curious to meet the artist. Um, do you want to start telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, my name's Thomas Carlson. I um, was uh, born in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I left when I was 18 because it's uh, too cold there. Oh, wow. Um, I went to undergraduate school for um i originally for 3d animation but i ended up um deciding to really focus on oil painting um and uh that was down in sarasota florida so i got out of the cold yeah. moved down south to the warm um and uh when i was there i've always really loved a lot about commercial art but um, I really just fell in love with some of like the Peter Paul Rubens paintings they had mm -hmm. down there in Sarasota um, and really wanted to explore more figurative paintings. So I ended up at the New York Academy of Art, which is up here in Tribeca in New York. Uh, and I've been up here ever since. So oh, wow. Cool. Um, so right now you're doing, I mean, you're doing so many things. Do you want to start um, currently, because I saw on your Instagram, um, the series that you're doing, like the... Mm -hmm. the the, like the politician leaders yeah, which yeah. i think they're so comical and so funny oh, thank you. so how did you come um like how did you come up with that idea because i thought it was like so different and unique so right now i'm working on a series of oil paintings um i'll probably make some more but i've made uh 11 so far and they're world leaders uh like the second after they hit a hole in one so that's this exciting moment yeah. where you know somebody hits the ball goes in the hole everyone's excited and um, it came about because I've always really loved working with the figure. I teach anatomy classes, uh, but it's always been a struggle of trying to figure out how I want to use the figure. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and also it's been a little difficult to always, for me at least, develop a consistent, cohesive series. I tend to make a painting, then I'll make a few more, and then I get to one where I'm like, all right, that's the painting, we're good, we're done, I don't need to make that painting anymore. Yeah. Um, this series, uh, I like it because there's enough ambiguity with the moment where you know you start to question, uh, well, hopefully the viewer drops their sense of like, you know, they like the painting, but they still hate the politician, or they like the painting and they like the politician. I mean, there's some divisive ones that some people either love or hate, um, and it becomes more about this uh, almost this moment in a sport that in most cultures is deemed as a privileged sport. Yeah. You know, it takes up a lot of land. Uh, it does this thing. And I, I happen to be a golfer. I'm an avid yeah. golfer. I golf twice a week. You oh, know, wow. I love it. Um, it clears my head. It allows me to stay in a place that's mm -hmm. really congested yeah. and, you know, and still be outside. So I've been trying to figure out a way to tie that into some of my paintings. Um, and uh, I, I think more than any other series, I've gotten a, some of the best feedback from yeah. this one, too. Like, right away, people are like, I love it. It's great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see sort of where it goes and also excited because I've got five of the pieces. They're going to be at a show in Miami next month, um, um, Aqua oh, Art Dark Miami. Bear, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the 14C uh, okay, group nice. showcase is bringing down some artists, and I happen to be one of them. Thankfully. Are you going to be there? In I'm going to go down. Yeah, oh, we might see each down. other then. That's cool. Oh, you're going? Yeah. Oh, great, nice. I'll yeah. be there from the uh, I think from the fifth to the eleventh. But yeah, I'm okay. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to bring my paint set, do some painting. Yeah. Uh, so very excited about that. Yeah, I hope it doesn't rain. I hope it's so sunny and nice because I hope it doesn't. It's getting rain. colder and colder here. Yeah, I think it will be good. Yeah, I hope so. And congrats on that. Oh, um, thank you, thank you. So, like, how's your creative process? Like, how do ideas come to you? Um, I play a lot with sourcing. Mm -hmm. um, I need to see it, you know? Like, yeah. I, I want to be able to see an image, um, you know, whenever uh, I travel either alone or with my wife. It's like we're going to the museums. Uh, she's a landscape architect, so she's always bringing us to the, the gardens now, oh, too, nice. which is great. So we get a little get to see the people and the gardens and yeah. you know i get to go see the paintings in the museum so um 
The nice thing about that is, uh, you know, the process, you know, I, I, I'm one of these people where I go through shows, I look at art, and I, I move really fast, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm just kind of trying yeah, to find too, things yeah. that, you know, if you go to a show or a museum with me, like I'm, but da, 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 you know, yeah. like he a very quick pace. And then when I find something I love, I'll slow way down. Me too, yeah. But, uh, you know, that's, I think, a large part of how I how I get inspiration. Um, and then also uh, technology is really exciting. I've, I've been really inspired by, like, originally when I started finding, like, 3D scans of people online. Mm -hmm. um, just even, like, Google Images. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to go onto, into museums and zoom way into paintings. Uh, that's exciting. And then also AI. Like I use a lot of AI when it comes to image building. Um, I haven't found any practical purposes as, as a final form of art, but I certainly think it uh, it's very helpful. Um, and uh, it's, you know, obviously a little controversial. It's a bit of the uh, the camera of today, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, how how if you look at a lot of the art back in the mid 1800s and artists that started using the camera yeah. artists that didn't um and just really how it completely changed the art market you know yeah. like you'd make money as a uh, as a sculptor making death masks yeah. you know in yeah. 1830 but you know in 1870 you know people yeah. weren't really doing that yeah. as much um or hiring someone to paint your grandma you know you just take a picture of her yeah so um obviously it's divisive um but i think it's a really good way to take a mirror and aim it at your painting you know i remember in art school like you look through the mirror you see your painting you see a different you know that kind yeah. of creates some sort of change and ultimately uh allows for you to explore other avenues within the you know within the piece so yeah um, so that's mainly where I get my inspiration yeah. so, and travel travel is yeah. big you know yeah for sure obviously and then are you an artist that like when you get into the studio do you start creating right away or do you kind of like have to like have a coffee sit down think um, of ideas nowadays I I do a lot of stuff digitally first mm -hmm. so um, I have an iPad mm -hmm. and I just kind of will have a few images on there that I'm working on yeah um, and I'll pull together usually anywhere from 20 and 30 images, you know, to develop a composition. And then I'll get it pretty close, and then I'll draw over it. Um, and then I have something where I'm like, okay, this would be cool. This needs to be a painting. Yeah. You know? And then it's almost like the act of painting it is to pay tribute to the image, right? Yeah. Because if I just left it as an image in my iPad, it's going to get deleted. It's yeah. going to disappear from yeah, history. Yeah. If I make a painting of it, yeah, you know, forever. then, you know, people aren't going to throw that away, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, uh, and I have a lot of those now, oh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's nice to have a lot of something too, where you can be like, wow, look at the work that I've done. Yeah. So it's for me, I, I, you know, I don't want to see them, but I just like to know they're there. Yeah. Um, because it does inspire me to then just kind of keep pressing forward and making yeah. more. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And do you have a preference, like, time of day to create? Do you, are you, like, a night person or morning um, person? <laughs> I or mean, do... ideally, I'm, I'm, I probably do my best work late at night. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, you know, anymore. I've sort of, like, had to convert more to, like, I'm a daytime painter. Yeah. And it's I've gotten pretty good. Like, I'm kind of the same – you know, as as I was, I I used to always go to bed at like four a.m. and now uh, I'm now I'm in bed at like eleven thirty. Yeah, you know, and um, and that's that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's okay. You know, you yeah. get used to it. It's probably better for me. Um, I have a tendency to like, especially when it's late at night mm -hmm. or like Minnesota winter or yeah. something like that. You know, you 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 let the obsession get the best of you, and you're out all night and you know before you know it you're like the sun's coming up yeah that's because you're in the zone right yeah the art zone yeah um yeah you know it's 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 good it's a good thing um the art zone but um there's a lot you can do in the studio where mm. you're wasting time yeah you know and i think you can learn a lot from wasting time uh while making but um i think it's also 
good to do other things. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of artists are guilty of spending too much time in the studio. And then they don't do other things. They don't meet other people. They don't they don't get yeah. physically active. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's one of the nice things I like about golf is it's like I'm meeting people that I literally never meet in any other situation. Yeah. You know, and you know, I think it's I. I think that's great. I think mm -hmm. you should meet as many different types of yeah, people as you yeah. possibly that's can. The beauty of life, right? You know? yeah. yeah, I think mean, it's it's great. You know, everybody's got different things you can learn about. You know, you can't shut people out. Yeah. You know. And do you have any artists that you're inspired by? Um, yeah, I I like um, artists that are no longer with us. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of that list. I really like John Singer Sargent, uh, Rembrandt. Um, you know, I actually really like a lot of like, you know, I went to Mexico City a couple years ago and went to Frida Kahlo's house. Oh, I love. And it's just something about being in that atmosphere yeah. and then like looking at her work and, you know, it's just it's you just really amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's the spirit of like documenting what she was going yeah. through, but still like doing it in a very symbolic way. Yeah. Um, is sort of, I think, what any artist would ever hope to achieve, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's why, you know, I think some of the greatest artists, um, you know, it can get a little, like, sometimes redundant, you know, how the yeah. same best artists are always thrown into everyone's faces. But yeah. I think they're the best, they're the ones that, like, encapsulated themselves in the work the best, like the Van Gogh and artists um, you know, in that nature. I really like, uh, earlier on when I was painting, uh, there's an artist, Wilhelm Hammerschoy, uh, who's a Danish painter, who did these beautiful interior uh, interiors and uh, used a limited palette. So he would use oh, like a warm, cool palette. Yeah. And I was really inspired by that. And that's, that's I think, lately what are, I've kind of been where I'm like really trying to like limit my color palette mm -hmm. a little bit more, more in like studies. I haven't yeah. really applied it to a series yet. The the hole in one series, yeah. which, which you know, I had never painted a golf painting prior to uh, like April, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it's like my oh, wow. my series are like, yeah, you know, I do like six months bursts. I'm doing this now, and then mm -hmm. you know, last year I was doing something different that involved AI, um, and then I do a lot of paintings that document my life. You know, yeah. like I, uh, there's been a couple of instances recently where I was ill and, um, I was just about to ask that, like the hospital series. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, I thought that was phenomenal. Yeah. So those paintings people react to really well too. Mm -hmm. And it's, and they're hard to paint, you know yeah. I mean? They're not like, you know, it's like, Oh, that should, you know, I don't think anyone's ever said like, Oh, that should be your thing. But yeah. you know, when you make a painting and then overwhelmingly more people tell you about it and not just like oh it got more likes yeah. or it got more whatever or like it got more comments connected. but like people like send you messages yeah. and they call you and they're like wow. wow you know that that's the series was two instances where one i uh i made a bunch of paintings at the beginning of 2001 i got covid real bad uh sick for two weeks then i was hospitalized for uh i think like 10 days and oh, sorry. they eventually gave me uh, drugs to make mm -hmm. it better and then I, I wasn't great for like a year and a half like yeah. I was off and then at the start of this year I found out I had cancer so I had oh leukemia. my god I'm so sorry yeah, that, that's okay um, so I I got treatment I got chemo uh, which which sucks <laughs> I yeah. can attest to it it's not a lot of fun but um, you know it saved my life uh, but I do have uh, it's a hairy cell leukemia which it stays with you your whole life. It's actually yeah. like a lymphoma, but um, but you know it's treatable. Yeah. So it wasn't like you know there was probably a couple months leading into it where I'm like I don't know what's wrong with me, and yeah. at least now I know, and it it didn't kill me. So and this was after COVID. This was this year. Oh okay. Yeah, this was. No, uh, like I mean, after you had the the COVID. Oh yeah, yeah. COVID yeah, yeah. was started 2021, and then this was uh, started this year. So. So yeah, there's been a lot of opportunities to paint myself yeah. in the hospital, yeah. but uh, you know, it's it, and I guess there's something going on at that time where maybe you're emoting more. Yeah. You know, I had a painting teacher a long time ago telling me like when you make a painting, you should feel something. It doesn't even matter what you feel, mm -hmm. but you should feel something. And uh, you know, I'm not a very, uh, I'm certainly not a religious person, not a very spiritual person, but I do think there's something there. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're feeling something. 
uh, some sort of ability to communicate something onto this canvas or board or whatever yeah. it is. Um, you know, it, that that would make me second guess things because I, I do think that those pieces, even even digital, because yeah. a lot of the pieces that I did, um, I went to this um, uh, this place to get treatment. Mm. Uh, wonderful place. Uh, this guy, Doctor Simon Bedeen, great guy. Shout out to <laughs> Save, him. Shout out to Simon, uh, saving my life. Yeah. Uh, and I got a pretty standard treatment, but it was interesting because I went there and I. Uh, it was a very local. It was up on JFK, and it was very local. And people mm. were going in for different, you know, supplements, and um, you know, so it was very much like you're in a room with a bunch of people um, from that neighborhood and mm. from around there, and it was just a great opportunity to sit there and draw uh, on my iPad. Yeah. So I have a lot of portraits of of people, and I probably will show them at mm-hmm. some point. I'm still yeah. figuring out how I'm going to do it, but I have about. I don't know, I think 12 or 13 portraits of people. Because, I mean, you're just sitting oh, there. Like, yeah. they hook you up, and you're just kind of hanging yeah. around for That was going to be my hours. question, because I was, like, when I saw the series on Instagram, I was wondering, like, did you paint that by memory, or did you, like, sketch that in person? And then later it got... Um, a lot nice. of... A lot of... There's, there's a couple pieces in that series where... Um, the person I asked them and mm-hmm. they just posed yeah because oh, it's like right. hey you're hooked up I'm yeah. hooked up <laughs> why not yeah. why not you want me to draw you and yeah. you know they were always very cool with it um and then there was uh there was one shot where I took like a couple of pictures and stitched them together mm-hmm. digitally which I still actually probably need to do some work on um and that was more of like a um you know, composing it, changing things yeah. perspective wise. Um, and then there were a couple uh, where I just did like a snap shot mm-hmm. and did a painting. Um, and uh, I have a couple of watercolors where I'm in them. So what I did with that, I have, a, I have one watercolor of my wife and I. And, uh, you know, it was like right mm-hmm. before I was about to get chemo so i'm like in the room like they're about to hook me up i'm like obviously very nervous because you know it's like you don't you don't hear good things about it you know you're just kind of like sitting there and also uh, by that point you know the the cancer and everything really taking its toll Mm -hmm. you know with harry cell it's like you kind of want to let it get to a certain point of badness (laughs) before you then get hooked up because it's it's kind of like they hit it back and then it grows back. So it's like obviously you want to do it when it's its worst. Yeah. You know, so then it takes longer in the on the on the back end. But um you know, so I'm sitting in this room and uh, I'm like, "Hey, can you take a picture of me?" Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, "All right, great. Now you sit down in that chair." And then I went back and I took a picture of us. And I I painted uh stitched them together digitally and then I looked at it on my iPad and I painted it. But um, I think a lot of it is the painting it while you're feeling that emotion, yeah. you know, because, I mean, I painted it while I was going through the treatment. Yeah. I painted it while it was like I, I remember what that felt like. And I think what's hard about pieces like that is, you know, you make them and then you're really just sitting there and you do it and then you want to put it past you because it was hard. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that's what's tough about it being like an ongoing series. Yeah. Like it's like, oh yeah, that's the guy. Oh yeah, that's that oil painter. You know, Thomas Carlson. He's the guy that paints himself sick all the time. Like yeah. I, it's not really where I want to be at. Yeah. But you know, they're like a B. It's like a B side. It's like yeah. oh, and there's this other thing. Yeah. You know, um, like it's uh, you know, Rembrandt has some paintings that. You know, he has his like series of Samson going around and Samson's like shaking his hand at yeah. people and being kind of a jerk and pushing people around yeah. and doing his thing. And then he has this like really heartfelt portraits of his Saskia and himself like as an old man. You yeah. know, it's like I appreciate them both equally. You know, obviously one during his lifetime made money yeah. and afforded him, you know, the ability to uh, paint some more. I mean, obviously Rembrandt famously, you know. He, he made it past the finish line, but he outlived pretty much everyone in his family, sadly. And, uh, you know, he, he died incredibly poor. Mm-hmm. You know, his body was thrown into a rental plot. Like, I mean, he was like yeah. not, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, he got he got beat up pretty bad. Uh, not very good with money, mm -hmm. um, and uh, also, well, the the Dutch yeah. East India Company and the British East India Company decided to start a hot war in the middle of his you know mm -hmm. middle of his career. So, obviously, militias weren't commissioning a lot of artists yeah. during that time period. But um, but yeah, it's you know. Uh, sorry, I'm going on. No, no, no. I love, I love hearing <laughs> you talk. My next question was going to be like you being an artist and going through such a, uh, a tough time. Do you think that kind of like gave you kind of like a shot of energy, like you know, um, like it helped you get through that you know that difficult time? Making art. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think that I think that it's better than feeling a lot of the the crap. Mm -hmm. You know, I I had to take two drugs. One's uh, Cladribine and one was uh, this other one, Rituximab. Cladribine, um, it just is the chemo, and my stomach hurts so bad. Yeah, oh like, it literally felt like someone took, like, a lighter oh my God. and just, like, brought yeah. it to the top of your stomach and just, like, burned it. Oh, wow. Um, so anything I could do to, like, not think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the Rituximab messed with my brain, so it was like I – it was, you know, I mean, my wife, Elizabeth, was so amazing throughout the process. But, you know, it it would be like she – I'd be watching television and she would come and say something to me and having like the two yeah. things yeah. hit me just like kind of just yeah. f fumbled me and made me feel really like aggravated. Yeah. You know, like I couldn't handle that, you no, know, like imagine, that yeah. multiple stimuli. Um, so that was very frustrating. So painting, I think, helped me focus. Like yeah. it was just like, you know, this place I could go and just focus on the thing. And then when I when I'd be done, I'd be happy about that. Yeah. And then uh, when I'd be finished, I'd be excited to start the next thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'd say it definitely helped mm -hmm. for sure. And and um, we previously chatted before the episode, and then you were telling me you run a business, right? Right. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so I run uh, Jersey City Art School. Um, we uh, actually started teaching classes mm -hmm. out of a two-bedroom apartment in oh, Jersey wow. City. Um, and uh, it was called Hamilton Park Studio. Mm -hmm. And it was in 2007. And I ran basically two sessions. Mm -hmm. And um, I got kind of a nice, cushy residency offered yeah. to me. Um so I ended up leaving to do this residency for six months. And then when I came back, uh, thankfully, the residency, um, I made a decent amount of money, mm -hmm. you know, making these paintings and managing the studio. Um, so I was able to pay off some student loans. And then also I had a little bit of money to put into a business. So I started looking for um, uh, storefronts and asking around. And... Um, Someone, uh, a friend of mine at the time, had a vintage store that she was closing and approached me and said, hey, you might be interested in this. And it yeah. happened to be downstairs from where I live. No way. Oh, so wow. I opened up the Jersey City Art School. I kind of went back and forth at first. I, mm -hmm. I made a sign that said, yeah. like, Thomas John Carlson Art Studio. You know, mm -hmm. this is my art studio. Yeah. You know, and I teach classes out of my named art studio. And then I kind of was... I became very scared that I wasn't going to be able to get enough students mm -hmm. to pay the rent. Yeah. And I didn't really have any other income stream, so I decided Jersey City at that time, there was nowhere where you could take art classes, mm -hmm. you know, if you were just a part of the community. Yeah. Um, except for maybe there was like a the ceramic studio in um, Bergen Lafayette. I think he, he was open at that yeah. time. But aside from that, there was nothing really going on. So I ended up um, renaming it Jersey City Art School um, and uh, started doing figure drawing sessions there, started um, a few other things. And there there was, like, some different art spaces in Jersey City at the time. Um, you know, uh, uh, 58 Gallery was oh, where wow. I showed art. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of, like, great momentum with that space. Um and I, I was hoping I could just really focus on the education yeah. and do a lot of those. Uh, and can you share the classes. website really quick for people listening? Uh, it's uh, JC uh, Art School, and that's singular, A-R-T-S-C-H-O-O-L.com. 
Jersey Perfect. City Art School, jcartschool.com, or just Google Jersey City Art School. But um, uh, we do a lot of classes. We have kids' classes, but mainly we've always really focused on adult programs. Mm-hmm. Um, lately, I've been really trying to push the programs to move more towards digital because there's a lot of opportunity with animation. There's yeah. a lot of opportunity with that. But, you know, I'm a traditional oil painter, so we have a lot of, like, beginner drawing and painting classes um, and uh, a lot of anatomy classes. I've gotten a lot of physical trainers that like those classes. Um, and uh, Sunday morning we do a watercolor painting class. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, it's it's nice. It would, it would be lovely to, like, hang out with people in the community. Yeah. You know? And how long have you had the business for? Uh, opened in 2009, January 2009. So uh, we actually ran classes at the end of 2008. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, and you know, we used to be on 5th Street, and then we were on the corner where Word Bookstore was on mm-hmm. Hamilton Park. And then now the classes are at 313 3rd Street, which also is a gallery space, yeah. and we rent studio spaces there. And I've been renting that space since uh, December 2010. Oh, nice. So. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, it's, it's a while. Yeah, you know? it's a minute. I feel different. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm like a different person. No, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so anybody like listening, if they're in- interested in like taking an art class or like taking their kids to get creative, they can just like go on the website, reach out to you. That's or, right. Yeah, yeah, you just sign up online. If you have questions, you can call or text. Probably text because yeah. like everyone, I'm sure everyone – is getting a million sales calls yeah. just like me. Yeah. So I don't always pick up the phone right away. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, especially today. So as a like having a business owner, being an entrepreneur, are you able to like um for example like work in the business and still get creative as an artist or do you do you have days where it's like a business day only and then an art day only? Good question. Um so one of the one of the biggest struggles I've always had with running my business has been um, I think in the beginning I was overly attentive to the business mm-hmm. and I stopped painting as regularly. Like mm-hmm. I would paint in class and I would mm-hmm. do demos, but I in some forms halted the creative process because I was putting all my energy into the business. And during that time period, looking back on it, I feel bad because I wasn't as attentive to uh, relationships. I wasn't mm-hmm. attentive to friends. Like I was just so singularly focused and kind of just freaked out that I was going to, at some point, lose yeah. the amount of students I was regularly getting. Um, around that time, I also expanded and started renting studio spaces to people. So that was a whole nother set of problems yeah. where it's logistical. And, you know, people show up and they bring people to their studio yeah. and it's like a party at the studio now. Yeah. And neighbors are calling me. You know, it's like a whole new thing um, and uh, where they need things fixed. You yeah. know, it's, so. Oh, my that, gosh. So you were doing basically everything. Like, yeah, I was doing all that and wow. it became overwhelming. So I think in the beginning, the problem was uh, being overly attentive to the business, yeah. you know, thinking about it all the time business expenses, all that. And then I kind of went the other way where I was just like, I hit the wall and I'm like, I'm going to lose my mind. I went the other way and was like, I'm going to get, I want to be creative again. Got really into music, Mm -hmm. writing music, playing music, uh, doing whatever I could. I played trumpet when I was younger. Uh, I just wanted to sing. So I started singing. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting super creative and then going the other way with it. Um, And that ping ponging of like, getting way too focused mm-hmm. and then not getting yeah. not being focused at all i think eventually kind of s- settled in mm-hmm. and i kind of hit this uh the stretch where i started hiring people okay. so when i focused on the business was when i had that person hired mm-hmm. like i get together with them i have like a little office space i'm like all right this is what we're going to do today we're going to make flyers for this we're going to generate a coupon code system mm-hmm. we're going to do these things um and uh, and really tried to make a shot at like you know yeah. okay you know thinking in terms of like well it's really not a business until you can walk away and leave for a while and it still yeah. runs itself like and ultimately um, hit a stretch of doing that for a while but you know if you if you run something like a for profit art studio it's going to be really multifaceted yeah. and people in the community see it and. It's not a conventional space. So they're like, oh, that's a big open space. 
I want to rent it for a birthday party. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I want to rent it for a wedding. I want to rent it for this. Yeah. So I, before I knew it, I was doing like a little bit of all that. Yeah. Wow. Which, which was fine because yeah. I always, I'm a social person. I loved that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, in undergrad, like I was the place that had the house where you went to for a party, yeah, you yeah. know, like you come to my house, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, because I like facilitating it. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what to do in a situation where, you know, I'm just kind of hanging out and talking about the same stuff over and over again. I get very like, I need to make something. Yeah. I need to be creative or, or my brain kind of like starts spinning out a little. Um, I think, I think now I have a, better understanding of where my where where I'm capable of working and how far I'll go with my business and then the amount that I really do at the end of the day know that my paintings are my legacy like mm-hmm. do whatever I need to do to just keep making the paintings yeah. the paintings are going to be more important than anything you know make enough money to buy my time back work on the paintings and then also um teach people that want to be taught you know i started teaching at montclair state recently uh just one day a week but two classes and it's great you know they call me professor you know it's like uh i I see them getting better Mm -hmm. and they're not like there for fun yeah and i mean i love the students in jersey city like i wouldn't trade that for the world but i mean i need I need to be teaching on a couple of different levels. Yeah. I feel like, um, like different, di- like interacting with different demographics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but also not. Uh, yeah, and it, if if one of the demographics is like people that are gonna go and keep making art for yeah. the next fifty years, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, the, a nineteen-year-old that has like sixty more, seventy more years of making art, yeah. you know, like that. To me, I gotta be teaching some of those people, mm-hmm. you know, like one day a week, maybe. And then I, I teach uh, I teach every you know Monday night Tuesday night Wednesday night and then all day Sunday at the art school. Oh wow! Uh, Thursday night I do band practice. Um, Fridays open, Saturdays usually open, um, mm-hmm. and then I'm painting throughout my day. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like fell into a pretty steady yeah. routine. You now. got like the sweet spot schedule now. Like you know how to yeah. you know, maneuver. Yeah. Everything There's some golf. Do. Yeah, <laughs> there's, Why some not, go- right? there's some golf in the middle <laughs> of the day that cuts into the painting time a little bit, but you know. And you mentioned music. Do you, Blake, can you tell us about you started uh, a trumpet? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I I'm in a band that I've been in now since um probably 2011. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, I mean, it's it, we're gonna start releasing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. I think that as an artist, for me, um, I fell in love with the the aspects of making music, mm-hmm. um, and really loved like the process of like bringing in different sounds, yeah. like messing around with GarageBand yeah. on iPad. And um, it was at a time in Jersey City where a lot of musicians were kind of like meeting up with other musicians yeah. and like writing stuff, and you know getting a practice base and recording. Mm-hmm. So I met uh, my friend uh, uh, Gabe Perry and um, and uh, Rudy and uh, Rudy Stamp, a few other uh, few other people. I met up with the, the sculptor, Ryan, and then um, uh, my uh, uh, actually now ex-wife, mm-hmm. Susan, and we started writing music as a, as a band. Oh, wow. It was called Papermaker. So paper makers take take taken on quite a few different forms yeah. and has now uh been around for a while and I've continuously played with uh, Alex joined the band almost immediately mm-hmm. continuously played with Gabe and Alex and you know we have this studio practice and we're going to be publishing seven I think you know seven songs oh, wow. and they're mainly songs that we wrote during the pandemic mm-hmm. uh, with also John Messina yeah. and Josh Barsh uh, John on keys and Josh on the drums and John is mixing down wow. everything yeah. so we're getting together and now we're kind of working on the stuff yeah. that I originally got into music for which was like I started making animations I started making paintings to music album covers and I'm like you know I really you know I made an animation and then I was like oh I gotta make music for the animation mm-hmm. and I think that's what kind of started it was I started writing something goofy on the yeah. piano really got into like dorking out about like oh the rule of fifths wow. that's how this works uh-huh. okay cool you know and then 
work making that work together and since I'm social I pick my musicians friends brains about yeah. it and like well how does this work or what does this mean and yeah. you know many of them uh, stepped in and, and ended up just naturally evolving into this process uh, there's something also about talking to and hanging around musicians um, where the creative process is so collaborative it's yeah. one of the things that now after you know running an art school for almost a decade and a half um you know it's one of the flaws that i look back on with the visual arts you know mm -hmm. and the sort of like postmodern teaching aesthetic in this country it's mainly about newness yeah. and about like well that's already been done mm -hmm. so you can shelve that idea whereas uh exercising the use of the tools if you imagine like a visual arts class you know in a situation like that, if you're focused on newness, there's no opportunity for you to like learn craft, yeah. right? So in music, like I played the trumpet, I was first chair trumpet, I really got into it, but I wasn't making up trumpet songs. Mm -hmm. I was playing pre-existing compositions in yeah. a room with a lot of people, yeah. and it was about craft. So um, I think that that is one of the failures of, of the visual art world and why there's kind of, I think, a backlash now. Yeah. You know, why I've been able to make a for-profit business work mm -hmm. like Jersey City Art School yeah. is there's a demand for craft. Yeah. You know, um, and and in music, I typically because that craft and that ability to get with a group of people to learn something that is uh, relearn something, reinterpret something that already exists, mm -hmm. gives people more of an opportunity to do what humans work on every day in normal conversation yeah. which is the craft of conversation and the craft of colla uh, collaboration you know so um i my version of getting back into this creative state was to work with artists uh that were musicians that were more familiar with that process mm -hmm. uh so i learned a lot from that um but uh yeah we're going to be releasing an album uh, i'll probably do a, a series of singles yeah um, Will it be like the end of this year or like first quarter? Uh, next it's going to be fourth, fourth quarter uh, next, uh, next year. We were probably originally going to um, – we were going to play a show, but we had uh, we had a few things happen, and now I believe we're going to be doing our show on the 1st of February mm -hmm. at the Pet Shop, and then um, – We'll probably do a show before that. We're trying going to try to line up a few things. Yeah, you know, hopefully get something out in New Hope and a few other spots. Uh, so we're going to start probably with a release of a single, maybe by the end of this year mm -hmm. in December, and then we'll probably release another single in January, maybe a couple in January, and then uh, obviously a couple more when yeah. we have our our big release party, um, which will be in February. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, the whole music has obviously been turned on its head yeah. with streaming and all that. Um, you know, it's I was not... about to say, do you guys have any material right now out for streaming that we can listen to? Um, Papermaker has a podcast, so yeah. there are three tracks that are out. If you look up Papermaker music under Apple, uh, you should be able to find it. Um, but I don't. Not, none of it's on Spotify, okay. but they will be soon. Yeah. So. Um, looking and, forward to it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I can't wait to listen. And yeah. how do you find the like the comparing like the creative process in art and the creative process in music for um, you? Like, how is that experience? Personally, I think that the creative process in music is uh, I st there's been a couple songs where I'm like, all right, this is a song I wrote, and I'll usually grab my phone and it will be like voice yeah. memo. And I'll be in my car and I'll be yeah. like hitting the steering wheel and like singing like a, yeah. a line. Um, there's probably a couple of the songs um, in this recent album that uh, were written that way. Most of them were improv. So mm -hmm. we have a studio. We have about 16 audio lines. We mm -hmm. hook up to everything and record everything that we do. Yeah. And um, Gabe's an amazing guitarist. Alex is an amazing bassist. They kind of start laying it down. And, you know, drums will come in, keys will come in, and um, we'll just find a mode, and then we'll listen back to it and say, okay, well, this part is oh, wow. great, yeah, and that part's great, and then we'll take that, and then we'll try to, in the next session, try to recreate that. Yeah. And then once we've recreated it, 
you know, sometimes I'll sit down and be like, all right, well, I got to write some lyrics for the, you know, for the chorus or I got to perfect this. So I'll write down something, you know, usually to the beat. Um, so it is truly like so a it's very like a genuine collaborative improv, creative process. Wow. Yeah. That's so I mean, cool. it's something about the process that I found out is just like, like when we're in the middle of it, yeah. I'll just start saying things. Yeah. And I wouldn't call it, um, it's not like really rap. Yeah. And it's not really like, what's the a trap it's not yeah. sometimes i'll dabble yeah, you know yeah, a little yeah. bit but it's more like trying to find um like a melody in a way like a, you know like it's almost like if you imagine like a um i you know going to art school and learning painting you mm -hmm. learn about images and inspire ambiguity within music you know i started thinking in terms of how to rewrite some of the hooks and the mm -hmm. lyrics you know and it and it translates really well mm -hmm. which is nice i think music has always been sort of my favorite uh connection to the visual arts because visual artists at least me as a visual artist yeah. is, is there's a slight obsession with um with not dying you know mm -hmm. like and there's yeah. like a little bit of a like yeah. i really love my yeah. favorite paintings by any artist are paintings they do towards the end of their life yeah like i just i don't know what it is like i always smell them out i'm like oh i love that piece and it's like oh well guy had lived like another yeah. year like there was something yeah i'm like that too that's funny something that had that. going yeah, yeah. on so i think visual artists they know that the piece of art more than anything else is their lineage is their way of it's their version of like almost like a, a you know giving birth in a yeah. sense you know a man making this thing or even a woman yeah. you know either either one any anyone at all making a piece of art it's it's essentially how you're projecting yourself into the future. Yeah. And in music, you do that as well because you can record it, yeah. right? Um, I mean, you can do that with any of the forms, but in music, you have a lot of control of that. You know, I think it, in contrast to something like dance, which is so immediate and temporal, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's, 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 I think usually if you're a creative thinker, you gravitate towards painting if you know you have that concern. Yeah, you know um, whether you know it or not. Yeah, and uh, have you always going back to your creative process? Have you always um, painted an oil that like from the beginning? Uh, I started with acrylic. Yeah, I, okay. I really, I really, my first uh, online handle mm -hmm. on AOL was uh -huh. acrylic sixteen. Oh wow! So, AOL. Yeah, I that really liked like. acrylic for a while. Yeah. You know, I was. <laughs> It was uh, my favorite medium, um, and um, I kind of, I think my sophomore year of college, I tried oil again. I had tried, like somebody gave me some um, water-soluble oils. I did not like how they felt like at an early age, so I switched over to uh, oil and did some oil paintings for like an illustration assignment when I was uh, in undergrad, mm -hmm. and then I fell in love. I'm like, well, this is what I've been wanting yeah. acrylic to do yeah. this whole time. So I primarily work with oil. If I want an acrylic look, I work digitally. Mm -hmm. um, and I really love watercolor mm -hmm. now, too. I do a lot of watercolor paintings. Yeah, as you said, on Sundays, right, too, especially? Yeah, yeah, come on out. Yes. Sundays, Jersey City Art School. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, you do some watercolor as well. It's it's um, it's it's a great travel medium. Yeah. Um, and I really love working with gouache, uh, on top of it. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's a little bit more. It's funny because a lot of the oil painting friends that I have, all are scared of watercolor, mm -hmm. and then a lot of the novice that are have always worked watercolor yeah. are scared of oil. Yeah. You know, and it's watercolor is just more like obvious mm -hmm. you know it's like the the hat the hat man is wearing a yellow hat paint the hat yellow paint the man whatever yeah. flesh tone what's his color of his shirt yeah. that color that color and then you just sort of let it do its thing which is like kind of one of the side effects of like just kind of bloop 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 you know yeah. kind of a more direct novice approach uh whereas an oil painter they usually have like uh it's almost more of an equation which mm -hmm. like you gotta do this and you yeah. do that then no you do that then you do yeah. that yeah and watercolor doesn't like that. Yeah, you know? no, watercolor, yeah. Watercolor doesn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, watercolor is the is the boss. Yeah, exactly. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Thomas, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad we got a chance to talk. You have so much going on from the JC Art School to the Art Fair coming up in December, the new eight singles dropping soon that I can't yeah. wait to hear. 
Um, do you mind just telling us your Instagram? Uh, yeah, my Instagram is tjc.paints. Um, and uh, Paper Maker is uh, Paper Maker Music. Uh, so you can follow us there. And Jersey City Art School is JC Art School. So um, Perfect. Thank you so much. Perfect. And are, and are you open to commissions? Like if somebody's listening to the podcast while we're speaking, they really love your work and they reach out to you? Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I do portrait commissions. Uh, I also do a lot of digital uh, commissions as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a, uh, a reconstruction of a historical house recently, which oh, was wow. a uh, kind of a two-point perspective piece. Um, but, yeah, I do take commissions, so thanks for asking. Yeah, of course. So please reach out to him. He's the best in the city. Oh. And thank you so much for being here once again. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Till next thank time. You. Till part two when you have everything completed next year. All right. Excellent. All right, thank you cool. so much. Very nice having, thank uh, you. having you, you having me out. I thank appreciate Thank you. That. My thank pleasure. You. Till next time, guys. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels. And check out the video interviews online. 